breaking the wall of sensory feedback in prosthetic limbs. Qualified in the Alberta lab, Catherine Shep, University of Alberta, Canada. So I want you to try to imagine holding someone's hand and you don't know how hard you're squeezing it. Imagine the subsequent hesitation and isolation that you'd feel. I'm describing to you a challenge that's faced by many people who wear a prosthetic limb. About one in 150 people have an amputation, and of these, many will wear a prosthetic limb to replace some of that functionality. Recent advances in robotic prosthetic arms have come a long way, to the point where some can move very similar to a normal human hand. However, none of these devices provide any sensory feedback. This means a person does not know if they're holding an object, how hard they're squeezing it, or where their arm is in space. So because of this missing link in the feedback loop, it can be very difficult to pick up an object such as an egg without crushing it or letting it slip through your fingers. My team at the University of Alberta is capitalizing on a surgery which takes the nerves that used to go to the hand responsible for touch and transplants those to skin sites on what's left of the person's arm. So now as the person is touched on that part of their arm, they feel as if they're being touched on their missing hand. We can harness that channel of information using something called a tactor. Essentially, it's a small pushing device that we mount non-invasively over top of the skin, so as their hand closes on an object, it presses on their arm, and they get an indication of that grasping strength. Now, as I mentioned, none of these systems are available commercially. In fact, those developed in research are either extremely expensive or very difficult to access. And, so how we hope, and this really limits how many institutions around the world can perform research in this important area. We hope to address this barrier by developing our own tactor system, with the focus keeping it accessible and inexpensive. We're hoping to release our design open source, so any round around the world with access to the internet and a 3D printer can assemble and manufacture the components themselves for a fraction of the cost. Here you can see our tactor design that I've integrated onto a commercial prosthetic arm. We were very fortunate to have an amputee volunteer come into our lab, try out the system, and at the end of the day we asked, would you want this integrated onto your daily prosthesis? His response was five out of five, yes I would. This is very promising, and with some improvements, we hope to expand to a larger pool of volunteers, as well as look at take-home trials to see how this system interacts under normal tasks of daily living. Uh, with that, is there any questions from the audience? Questions? Comments? Yes. So this would help people, anyone with an amputation of the upper limb, basically. Um, so anyone with this surgery would work well, um, but we've actually even tested with people who don't have that surgery. Um, it just, it's a little bit less intuitive. Um, Question over there. Can this be adapted? <laughs> Can this technique be used with people who've had an amputation for a long time? Yes, it can. As long as they still have some sensation of touch in their arm, it can still work for them. Okay, to conclude, uh, yeah, we have developed seconds. a tactor system for a fraction of the cost of similar designs, and in this way, we hope to make sensory feedback uh, accessible to those around the world. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks.